it's Amanda from The Fundamental Home and I am making one of my most requested meals today and I thought I would share with you how I make it. And what I'm making is ham pot pie. And I'm gonna link in the description box down below the recipe that I use. It's actually one I found on Pinterest. If you are not following me on Pinterest, I got a link down below too in the description box for my Pinterest page. So make sure you go there and follow me. And uh, this particular meal is actually found in my, I think it's called Main Dishes uh, Pinterest board. So you wanna definitely look through that because that's actually full of meals that I make all the time. So the very first thing when you make pot pie you have to do is make the pie crust. Making three different pie crusts. Um, we're making two regular pie crusts and one gluten-free pie crust. So I'm actually starting with the gluten-free one because the counter we do that first that way we're not contaminating. And uh, I got it kind of set up so I'm going to come over here and show you what I have and then show you how I make the pie crust and I'm gonna show you the non-gluten-free one as well. Okay, so here is my recipe book, and here is where I've got everything set up to make the gluten-free pie crust. I am using gluten-free flour. All that was left in the bag, but this is the one that I recommended in another video. I'll put a link down below to uh, an Amazon affiliate link to show you where you can purchase this online if you need to. But this has been, it was recommended by a friend. It's really been my favorite one that we use. A little grainy, but it works really well and it's not terribly expensive. Uh, anyway, I have a little flour here on the bottom just to keep it from sticking to my counter. In here, for the double pie crust recipe, we have two and a quarter cups uh, all-purpose flour, and of course this is the gluten-free blend. And we also have, it's calls for three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. I actually, you can see the yellow in the middle there. I'm out of regular salt, so I used onion salt. Since this is a savory dish, I figured that was good enough. Uh, the onion salt wasn't going to be a problem. You also want to have two-thirds a cup shortening. So there's two-thirds a cup shortening already measured out for you. And the recipe also calls for 8 to 10 tablespoons of cold water. Over here in this quarter cup measure, you can't really see it, but I actually have water. So what we're going to do, I'll sh kind of shake it, see if you can see it. There you go. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take, first of all, I'm going to take this and stir the salt in with the flour. And I'm using my KitchenAid mixer bowl, but, I mean, you could use any bowl that you have. This is just, it was convenient because... There's my mixer. So it's right here. You know, this mixer was a Christmas gift from my sister. She had found it on eBay needing a little repair. And she took it home and did the repairs herself and gave it to me for Christmas. So she got it for a great bargain. Anyway, so that's mixed in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in the shortening. I get asked all the time about my flour. I did a recipe. Oh, it's a recipe. I did a video. Ugh, it's not coming out. All right, I gotta move the camera. But I'm gonna tell you, I did a video on keeping everything cold, so I keep my shortening and my flour in the fridge to keep it cold for these pastry doughs. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop this in, and then I'll show you how I cut in. All right, here I am, I'm scooping it in. And I just, I don't know about you, but I still have baby spoons for my kids are little. And it's really convenient when I'm baking to use them. So, just a little use. I didn't get rid of my baby spoons. I probably won't ever. But the shortening is so sticky. And I'm looking at the video and you can see my dirty dishes in the sink. Yeah. Well, I haven't done them yet. <laughs> but <laughs> they'll get done here in a minute. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This actually, it's kind of a long process because you gotta take care of the dough and then you gotta make all the ingredients and it actually takes a little while for this to cook. So um, this is definitely something that you want to do on a day when you're home and you have some time and you want to make it well before you're actually going to eat it um, because it does get really hot and it's actually kind of um, easier when you have time to let it cool down. So anyway, here we go. Here is the thing that I use to cut in. I'm going to give you an Amazon affiliate link to this too because a lot of times people tell me they come over to my house and see me using it and they're like, what is that? The link you can use if you want to see what it is and what it looks like, but I'm going to tell you the truth, you're better off getting it, this at your local dollar store, like actual dollar, like Dollar Tree or Mighty Dollar or something like that, because um, you can get it there and it's pretty much even an inexpensive one will work. So anyway, basically what you're going to do is this, I'm going to show you. Okay, what we're doing is we're taking this little instrument thing, I don't even know what it's called, and we're just pressing it inside 
to get this shortening cut into little tiny crumbs with this flour. Okay, now the shortening is a fat. If you don't have shortening, you could use butter. Um, in a pinch, you could even use oil. Um, I don't recommend oil because it's one of the reasons why you keep it cold is because you want these little crumblies of fat in there. I'm shaking the camera. I'm so sorry. Anyway, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing with my hand and not with the camera. But anyway, we wanted to get to these coarse crumbs, as they say. And uh, the reason why we do that is because when it's baking, you have this, I don't know, extra little bit of fat that kind of melts slowly into the crust, and that's what makes it tasty. Well, when you do the oil, it just kind of makes it oily, <laughs> not flaky and delicious like a pastry crust ought to be. So um, i got to get my fork here and uh, scrape this extra off. Get this extra off. But I mean, I wouldn't use the whole thing with oil. I mean, I would if I absolutely had to in a pinch. Um, but what I would do is if, say, I was running out of butter and shortening and I was awfully close, I might use a little bit of oil to make up the difference. So I think we're just about to the coarse crumb stage. So if you look at that, you can see what that looks like. I'm trying to get that clear there. You can see the size of the crumbs. And so it's just got a little thickness in there in addition to the uh, thin piece, thin bits of water. So again, I'm going to take my fork and scrape this off. And this is where we add the water. This is where I wish I had something to like hold the camera, but I don't. <laughs> so you just got to bear with me as I show you. Okay. So I'm going to add my water. It's 8 to 10 tablespoons, which really should take almost all of this quarter cup measure. But I like to do it a little bit at a time, especially with the gluten-free flour, because the gluten-free flour, like I said, it's a little coarse, more coarse. It's a little more dry, and I actually think I'm going to need more water than um, this quarter cup measure. So, yep, I know I'm just moving this around because I'm doing it one-handed. All right, I'm going to pour the rest in, and I'm probably going to need to get more. All right, let me pause the camera and I'm gonna keep adding water until I get it to where I want it and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's how you tell what's going on, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the dough and kind of squeeze it until it forms a little ball. And this is actually a little dry because it's crumbling, but we have more coming. I, I just do it in small chunks just to see if it'll stick together. And then this is what's left and I just put some more water in it. And so that's sticking together. So this last little bit I'm gonna pour on top. Grab my hands in here, make sure I get it all out. Okay, I'm gonna take all of this and make sure there's enough water in it to form one big ball. So that's how I check it, and then of course this is gonna keep it from sticking. So I'm gonna squeeze this all together in one big ball and add a little extra water if I need to, and then I'm gonna show you what it's like when it's all done. Okay, here it is, one big ball on my counter. And what I ended up using was almost three of those quarter cup measures. But like I said, I do it a little bit at a time because it just kind of depends. So what I'm gonna do, let me zoom out a little bit because that was looking awfully close, okay. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut this in half and one half will be for the top and the other half will be for the bottom. So let me cut it in half and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it, okay? Right here on my counter, camera person is going to hold it for me because I grabbed one of the kids. Anyway, I have half of the, you can see the other half is right here. This is half of the gluten-free dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of get it pressed out a little bit because you can see I have my rolling pin here, but gluten-free pie crust doesn't have gluten and gluten is what allows it to stretch. So it doesn't quite work the same way as a regular pie crust. I have to actually put the pie pan right here and then take this dough that I've already pressed out a little bit. You can see it's going to come up. And then since I've got it pressed out, I can spread it around the pie pan, okay? And then I'm just going to press it like this until it forms a big crust. And I'm, I want to make sure it goes all the way around and there's no gaps because we don't want the filling to seep through, okay? 
You can see when I use my fingers, it kind of presses a little further and it's not so even. So I really try to keep it with the heel of my hand. And you just kind of want it to come up to the edge. It doesn't have to go over the edge and have a pretty, pretty edge like a gluten crust. The gluten-free crust is a little bit more challenging that way. But in the end, it will taste just as good. And we're going to have a top crust on it anyway. So you are going to need to use the corner of your thumb to get around the edges. So I'm going to keep pressing this and then I'll come back and show you what I do to make the rest of the pie crust. Okay, so here is the pie crust pressed around the edges. And you can see I just bought it up to the end. You can still see there's fingerprints, but there's no, no holes in it. So that's going to work out just fine. We don't blind bake it for our um, pot pie. Here's the other half. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wrap this in plastic wrap. Okay, and we're going to set that aside in the fridge until it's time for me to actually put the top on because we're going to have to make the other pie crust and make the filling and then we'll put the top on. So I'm just going to set this, like I said, tightly wrap it in plastic wrap so there's no air. I might need to add, it might dry out a little bit in the fridge. We might need to add a little more water, but we're going to put that together in a second. And then over here, we're going to get to work on the regular pie crust, which actually uses the same method. Okay, so here we are with the regular uh, pie crust. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. We are making four pie crusts because I'm making two pies and each pie has two crusts. There's the bottom crust and the top crust. But I'm only making a three crust recipe because a gluten filled <laughs> pie crust recipe is stretchy. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about in just a second. So. I actually, for me, I always have way too much left over if I make four. So I'm going to make three and that will work to make four pie crusts. Does that make sense? I think it does. So anyway, in here I have three and a half cups of flour. Right here I have another two thirds of shortening. I'm going to have to scoop another one third after I get this out. It's also got the onion salt in here because that's what I have. And then I'm going to fill this with water again. I haven't done it yet when it's time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mix this up just like I did last time. Go ahead and put the shortening in, cut it in just like I did last time, and then I'm going to take you and show you um, exactly what happens when you roll this out and stretch it out. So give me a second to get it all together. It's, it's the same process. I'm going to add the shortening, cut it in, add the water, pour that in, and then get it till it's a nice uh, soft ball, and then I'm going to start rolling it out and I'm going to show you what happens then, okay? Once I got the pie dough into a ball, I divided it into four rather even um, balls. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two bigger ones and I'm going to make those the bottom of the pie crust. So I got a couple that I think are a little bit bigger than the others. And you can see I've already floured my surface and I'm flouring this even though it's not going to stick. And then I'm just going to roll it out like a regular pie crust. There's no real magic to it. I mean, obviously I'm not a professional, so, <laughs> so don't... Uh, don't judge my pie rolling skills. Um, but you're just going to turn it back and forth. And the difference between this and the gluten free crust is that the glutinous crust is kind of um, stretchy. So that's why you roll it out because you're trying to stretch it out and make it uh, just the right size that'll fit on your pie um, pan. So I'm just kind of rolling out the thicker parts and I just, because my counter is kind of small, it's a little bit of a challenge, but um, I think I've got it just about to where it's the right size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and kind of roll it onto my rolling pin and I'm going to transfer it into my pie crust. So here's my pie pan. I picked it up, moved it over here and I'm going to take this and kind of roll it out over it. Okay. And then I'm going to just pick it up on the edges and kind of seat it in there so that it covers everything. Okay. What I like to do is I don't want to mess with turning over the edges. I really just take a butter knife and I just cut around the edges and get that extra pie crust off. And I'm going to put it in a pile and I'll show you what I do with it. So the pie crust, I'm cutting off the edges, it'll just take a second. I'm kind of sloppy about it. 
Okay, now that I've got all the edges off, I'm gonna go ahead and, well, actually I won't flute this yet. If I were making a pumpkin pie, I'd flute it now. But uh, this has a top crust, so we'll wait to flute it. So I'm just gonna set this aside, and then I'm gonna roll out the next bottom crust, and then we'll work on the filling. Okay, so I'm here on my Pinterest page, and here is my recipe that I have pinned. It's from Taste of Home, and it's for all gratin ham pot pie, and that's what we're gonna be making. So I've already showed you how we make the pie crust, both the gluten-free and the gluten, and here they are on the table. You can see this is the gluten-free, and these two are the glutinous ones. And that big bowl right there is where we are going to put the filling. Now, we're gonna double it. And I know, again, I'm making three pies, but I'm only using a recipe for two because it actually kind of overfills it, so it almost bubbles over. So when I put it in a third pie crust, I think it actually is filled uh, better, more comfortably. So let me tell you what the recipe calls for. I'm gonna go show it to you on the computer. Okay, we have one package of all gratin potatoes, one and a half cups boiling water, two cups frozen peas and carrots. I don't have anywhere near that, I don't think. So, but we're gonna use whatever I have in the freezer. Uh, one and a half cups of cubed fully cooked ham. I'm just gonna use whatever ham I have. A can of cream of chicken soup. A can of, oh, excuse me. It says one can of mushroom stems and pieces. We're not gonna use that. Um, half a cup of milk. I have my evaporated milk trick that I use. I'll link up at the top to the video that talks about that. Then I have half a cup of sour cream, a jar of pimentos, which I'm also not going to use, and of course the pastry that we've already made. So it says in a bowl, combine the potatoes, contents of the sauce mix, and water. Stir the peas, carrots, ham, milk, uh, mushroom, sour cream, and pimentos, and transfer to the dish. So that's what we're going to do. And then you're going to bake, if you see at the bottom there, bake at 400 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. So, but like I said, we're making two of these recipes, putting it in three pies. So um, we're going to double this. So let's go grab all the ingredients and we'll get started. Okay, here's what I did. I got a little distracted and I was trying to get everything together. And I cut up potatoes and cut up the ham. And then I remembered I'm making the au gratin pot pie. So you really don't need the cut up potatoes because you're going to use the au gratin potatoes. These are the ones from Aldi. So we're going to have extra potatoes in this one because I've already cut them up. They're already in there, so they're going to go in. So anyway, I have the au gratin potatoes, two packages sitting over there, two things of cream of chicken soup. There's my frozen vegetables. They're going to go in. And the sour cream I have over here. I'm going to grab it and it's coming over. This is half a cup. I'm going to get another half cup in a second, and then I have my three cups of boiling water getting ready to come in. So I'm going to go ahead and mix all these in. I'll show you what I have, and then I'll pour it out. That's what it looks like when it's all mixed together. And this is a huge bowl. I mean, don't ignore my messy table because I spilled stuff when I was getting everything together. But, I mean, there's the bowl next to the pie pan. Like, it's a huge bowl. And you can see that it, it really fills it up just about halfway. And so there's plenty in here to fill up these three pie pans. So I'm gonna pour this. Ricky is walking by with the laptop, so you might see his laptop over there. Sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna pour this into the three pie crusts that we have over here. And then I'm gonna make the pie crust toppings and show those to you, show, me, show you how I flute it. We're gonna put it in the oven and then you'll see the finished product here in a minute. Like I said, this is a messy production, but anyway, here's the filling now that it's actually in all three, and you can see that it filled it up really well, um, and that if I'd have just put it in two, it would have been way over the top. So, and I did have, in fairness, I did have extra potatoes in here, but, um, cause I, I don't know why, I totally just didn't think about it and cut them up. To make a gluten-free pie crust, this is not a gluten-free filling, because the au gratin potatoes, uh, I think they have wheat in it. Yes, it does. And also the cream of chicken soup has wheat in it. But for some reason, the wheat in those does not bother Ricky so much. However, the pie crust is too much. So the filling is fine for him. Uh, but if you are totally gluten-free, you want to find a gluten-free option for you. And there's a lot of great gluten-free uh, uh, all gratin potatoes and cream of chicken soup recipes out there. So 
I really need to get on making them, I just haven't yet. Anyway, I'm gonna roll out the top crust now. We're gonna start with the gluten-free one. And the gluten-free crust here, and I have um, put it out on here. And you can see it's more crumbly now that it's sat in the fridge for a little while, so I'm gonna add a little more water. And then I'm gonna press it out and make it flat again, just kind of like I did when I was doing the bottom crust. I have actually pressed out the pie crust so it looks like it's flat and it looks like how it would look if I placed it on top of the pie. And here's what we are going to do. I'm going to actually bring the pie over here, moving my book out of my way, and I'm going to take this spatula right here and I'm going to scoop this up in pieces. It's not going to come together in one piece like the glutenless pie crust does but I'm gonna take this scoop and scoop it on top. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about in just one second. Okay, so here's my crusts and they are covered. I'm gonna show you how to flute it. And I just wanna show you that this, remember I said that I was only gonna make a three crust recipe and I usually only needed that much because there's a lot left over if you make enough for four. Well, here is all of the crust that's left over from cutting off the edges with the knife. So um, I actually am going to wrap this up and put it in the fridge and after we eat all of this tomorrow, because I only have three pie pans, I will roll this out and make uh, this into one more crust and it's going to be the crust for a pumpkin pie. So usually we have enough crust left over for that. If there was not enough left over for another crust, we would make uh, pie crust cookies, which basically we would just roll this out flat, spread it with butter, put some cinnamon sugar on it and bake it in the oven for just a few minutes till it gets crispy and they're like kind of like shortbread because uh, it's really just flour and shortening uh, but it's it's really tasty little thing that I've always given the kids since they were little so let me show you how to flute well actually first before I flute it let me show you how I cut it in the middle uh, I cut one right here in the middle then one at the bottom and one on the sides kind of like a cross we're using a light <laughs> then I go on the northwest southwest northeast southeast direction and then I do the same thing over again all around. Just make a second row of it. Okay? Alternately, you can do one in the center. Make the cross direction ones. Make these over here. And then you can go in the middle. It doesn't matter which way you do it, I just try to make sure it looks semi pretty. Uh, it has some breathing room for everything to bubble up. This one, because it's so broken up, you don't need to do that to it. It's going to pop out on its own. So let me show you how to flute it. Okay, so to flute it, you're just going to put your two fingers like this, take your thumb, and push in the corner. And same thing, two fingers together, put your thumb in between. And this actually has both crusts on it. I've done this for a long time, so... I'm not used to doing it on camera, but it usually makes a really pretty pie crust that's pretty simple and not complicated. And since I cut the extra dough off the edge, I don't have to worry about tucking anything in. And it, like I said, it's really helpful because it gives me extra dough to make a pie tomorrow. So you just go around, keep turning it until you have your last one. And there it is, that one's all done. So I'm gonna do that to this other one. Like I said, I don't flute the gluten-free crust because it actually doesn't go all the way to the edge. It just goes to the end. But here's another glutinous one. You can see that the two layers are one on top of the other, but when you do this, you actually kind of press and it helps seal that edge. And sometimes they look prettier than other times, so. We'll just see. There's all kinds of different ways to do fluting. If you go on Pinterest, you can save, uh, excuse me, pin, I should say. I think it's save button now, but anyway. Um, you can put look at all kinds of different ways to do fluting that are really pretty. But this is just a way that I do that's simple and easy and I do it all the time. So there it is, two fluted pie crusts and the gluten-free crust got a mess I'm gonna have to clean it all up but first these are going in the oven at 400 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes um, there you go 
Okay folks, my light has changed. It's been a little while and you can see the pies are done. This is one of my regular full gluten pot pies. I haven't cut into it yet. Here's the gluten free. I'll give you a full shot of that. You can see it has a kind of rustic appeal. And of course here's another full gluten. And it did come out on the edges a little bit. You can see the I guess you can't see my finger. There it is. I'll have to try that. <laughs> it did go over the side a little bit. And you can see it went over the side a lot more on this one because it didn't have the tightness of the edges. Um, so I do have a little bit to clean up in the bottom of my stove, but it's not too bad. It's looking really good. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed my video showing you how I make my hand pot pie. Uh, it's a little bit early. So we're gonna let the pies cool and then they'll be ready for dinner. So I'm really looking forward to having some. That's it, I will see you guys next time.